everyone. We are back this week in New Haven. Yes, uh, we are blessed to have this on our doorstep. And today we're gonna go along the other side of the riverbank. So last week we were on one side and this week we're gonna be on the <laughs> on other the side. Other side. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed, cause last week we found loads of lovely juicy little bits. So uh, I hope we do today, Josie. More finds inbound. Yeah, let's do it. Heavy, isn't it? Yeah, it's solid metal. <laughs> and look, I just picked this up, Josie. See, it's some kind of big split pin, maybe. Oh, yeah. And this cannibal thing. Red. <laughs> How cold are you, Josie? Sub zero. <laughs> There's a few finds around there, look. And. Ooh. Base of an old bottle. Part of a lady leg. Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you got, Josie? Oi, oi, we've come into a worm sign zone. Okay. Nice old glass, beautiful colour. That is a lovely colour. Then some weird pottery that has some sort of wormy thing on it. Yeah, I actually <laughs> recognise it, but I, from my uh, research, but I can't remember the name. Look, let's take it and we will put down the name of it afterwards. But yeah. It's a specific pattern, I'm sure. But Very look, weird. I just noticed down here, we've got another big look at that. Oh, nice. And a lot of coal, which we know um, around here is where the boat's coaled up. And I've got cold fingers at the moment. <laughs> hey! hey. At first glance, I thought this piece of pottery was just some crazy pattern from the 1970s. It's got that abstract look alongside the clashing, zany colours. However, after cleanup and a closer look, it appears to be from a piece of industrial slipware. Now, thanks to Richard Henry's articles and book for helping us with this identification, it's rather appropriately named Earthworm or Cat's Eye Design, which was made using a three-spouted applicator. Not really sure what that looks like, but that's what it's apparently made by. And this type of slipware was made between 1780 and 1830. We think this particular piece was from the 1830s. And here's an example of a complete jug in the same style with the Earthworm design. getting a bit dark, but Dad's found something. Look, it's one of those sweet little school milk bottles. Oh, Isn't it? cute. Yeah, I think, is it a third of a pint or half a pint? Something like that. Yeah. That's quite cute. Quite nice to put some, a flower in or something. I can't speak properly. So yeah. <laughs> right, everything crossed. Ow! Oh, just broken at the top. Yeah, and it's got some writing on as well. I found something funny. What have you found? It's a shame about that. We're going to leave it though. Can't we cut the top off? I guess it needs to be washed again, I think. What have you found? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> well, oh, um, it's a, from, from the football. table football. Table football thing. Yeah. How funny is that? That is quite funny. Yeah. We might be able to do something with it. <laughs> Yeah. So there you go. That's my find. <laughs> oi oi. That is the top of the bottle and I think I spy a vulcanite still in place. So let's check it out. See what's on there. Oh, I think that says cobra. You know me, I like my snakes. Let's get it out. Now it's a bit dark now and I can't fully see it. But that appears to say Cobro. It's got some writing at the top and the bottom. Here we've got the cleaned up Vulcanite bottle stopper. You can usually learn so much about the history of the company they originated from 
and this is one we haven't found before. So this is a CO Cobro Mineral Water London Stopper. I'm sure the second word is brothers, but the first bit escapes me at the moment. If anyone knows the manufacturer, then let us know in the comments. It would be so good to solve this mystery. Day two then. <laughs> yeah, it's not very nice at the moment, is it? Mm. That's a negative. But we're outside and we're going to go along to a little bit of beach that we've just spotted, exposed at low tide, just up there. Okay. And down here, we have a piece of clay pipe. Well, that's a good sign. Oh, look, just next to it, another one couple of bits. A good sign. Okay, what are you spotted? I found a bit of a clay pipe and it's a little bit more interesting. Oh, in, oh. <laughs> well look. Not really sure about that. Looks like the bottom of like a locust or something, but you see it's yeah. another sort of section of a clay pipe. Not seen one like that before. No, it's, it's like a sort of basket, isn't it? Yeah, maybe. There's also a coin here. Oh. Oh, actually, you know what? Well, I'm not sure about that. No, it's almost like it's been sanded. Can you see the lines on it? Yeah. Two p. No, I don't think so. I think it might be a, a penny. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, well done. Well, we'll take that. In the bag it goes. We here. Look at that. Tiny button. Just see down here a coin. Just a 2p unfortunately. But it's a coin. I think it's broken, but Have a look anyway. It is broken, but nonetheless, that is a lovely crackly colour. Oh, nicely done, Joseph. Two cut downables here. I mean, this one's going to be a bit shorter, more like a tea light. Mm. It's quite cool. That says maybe. Clayton Limited, um, Brighton. Brighton. Yeah, um, uh, I think you've got another one there, Josie. Yeah, so that's quite nice. And then there's this one here too, which has got some writing on. And at the bottom, of course, where New we are. New Haven. Oh, New look, Haven. If we cut it across here, we'll get the New yeah. Haven script in there. Yeah. So that's two nice cuttables. Well, hey. <laughs> I spy a boo tie. Now, will it be big enough to cut down? Oh, <laughs> that's a real shame. Cause look, that's got some really quite nice writing on there. Damn, that would have been a lovely one. Lewis and New Haven. Oh well. Another one. Now, will this one this time be big enough? Ooh. Yes! I think that's just about big enough to cut down. We'll take it. Ginger. There's yeah, so much worm sign here. We've hit a bit of a seam here, but it's all kind of broken, hasn't it? We've also hit a seam of meat paste. Meat pastes everywhere. Mm. Look, look, what? What's that? A copper leg of something or other. Look at that! Oh, well, there's me thinking it was complete. It's the uh, 
the Joker part. Oh. Inbound. Fingers crossed, Josie. No. That was really close. A bit warm now? I'm too warm actually. Nearly an absolute juicy Fry & Co. What's that, a skittle shaped bottle? Yes. Yeah. Oh, would have been nice, it's a bit low to cut maybe. Yeah, it's local. We found the uh, vulcanite, haven't we, before? Yeah, and I found a fake vulcanite. Look how annoying that is. <laughs> Very annoying. Although we can put that in the bin. Yeah. Pickle jar, sauce, meat. <laughs> Dad's found a little dish. Yes, it is complete. Complete. I think we'll leave it for someone else though. We don't need a little dish. Here's a sheer top. Really? Yes. So I found this little vial type thing and it looks to be a sort of aqua, maybe greenish colour. And it's um it's a sheer top. She's lovely. We'll oh, clean well that found. up and and take a proper look. Well done, Josie. Thank you. Quite pleased with that. And a meat paste. Wherever you go, or wherever we go, we can't seem to escape them. Looks like spirits are flagging, Josie. Yeah, feeling a bit tired. Okay, Josie, summon up your last reserves of energy. We often wonder why we find so many beer bottles and mineral waters in this section of the River Ouse. It may have something to do with the closeness of the bridge in, which is about a stone's throw or a bottle's throw from where we are now. When we investigated this a bit further, we learned a bit more of the history of the inn and of brewing in this area. We need to start with a well-known figure in New Haven's history, Thomas Tipper who started a brewery next to the inn beside the river here in around 1780. His beers earned a great reputation, said to be due to the brackish water used in the brewing. Old Stingo was his best beer, which was called the New Haven Tipper. Old Stingo is just a generic term for strong beer. Once, Old Stingo was served to the guests at Compton Place, a mansion in Eastbourne nearby. And a couple of hours later, after the ladies had retired to bed, the servants had to be sent out into the grounds of the mansion to retrieve the unconscious guests and drag them to the nearby stables, where at least they could sleep off their drunkenness under cover. The Prince Regent, or George IV, was also said to be a devotee of Tipper's old Stingo beer. Now, Thomas Tipper died in 1785 and Tipper's brewery changed hands a number of times, eventually ending up in the hands of the Towner brothers in 1886. And I think this is likely where our two cut down dark green glass beer bottles are from. The Bridge Inn then became famous as a place for where in 1848 the hotel hosted Louis Philippe the last king of France, his queen and their entourage for one night as they escaped the later French Revolution. One of the nice things about mudlarking is when you find something, it's fun to follow the clues and disappear down the rabbit hole, exploring the local history you uncover. For me, this makes looking around my local area much more enriching. In this instance, it makes me wonder what a pint of New Haven Tipper or Old Stingo tasted like. Oh, to be back in a pub. Well, that was a lovely couple of days. Not particularly rich in finds, but still very, very enjoyable. Yeah, I feel lucky to be able to get out there really and explore. But as you say, not 
You know, I don't think we can really do favourite finds for this episode, can we? <laughs> no, but I have to say, I'm very pleased with our little cut-down bottles. Yeah, and I like the backstory there. I really did enjoy researching that, and uh, it feels like it's filled in a missing piece of the jigsaw to explain why there are literally just so many broken beer bottles and mineral waters in that part of the river. Now, should we talk about Ralph then? Please introduce Ralph. <laughs> yes. Uh, our little uh, football mascot. I think he just has a Ralph-like face. He's Ralph, and he's cleaned up well. <laughs> yes. I'm sure he'll be friends with Snakey, Josie. Uh, overall, a really enjoyable couple of mudlarks, Josie. Let us know in the comments below what you thought about our adventure today. Thanks everyone so much for watching. We do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave us a like. And of course, subscribe for videos every week. As always, massive thank you to anyone who supported us on Ko-fi. We've left a link in the description of the video if anyone wishes to donate to us and help us improve our channel. Thanks again, everyone. Bye for now from the Mud Pies.